Hi, we're Garrett and Kathy Pashusta with The Grit and Polish, and we're here today with Lowe's to talk about the shower surround. So tiled shower surrounds are awesome because they have a really nice upscale look and they're really durable. They last forever if they're done right and they're one of those timeless pieces that we always try to put in our bathrooms. Kathy is not a fan of fiberglass, so. <laughs> True. So tiled surrounds might take a little bit longer than just a fiberglass yeah, install. A lot longer. <laughs> But, you know, I think they look quite a bit better. They feel a lot more authentic. And, you know, I really love throwing a cast iron tub in here too. I think it's just a really nice, sturdy, last forever kind of touch. This one from Kohler, the Bellwether, is a beautiful tub. It really it's is, yeah. really, it actually is one of the deeper cast iron tubs. And so it's nice to be able to have a little bit more volume in there for kind of soaking. You throw and a lot of kids in here and they would have an awesome bath. It's got really clean lines. It's just a really nice tub. I, li I like the Bellwether from Kohler. So one of the first things to do when you're getting ready to install your shower surround is to make sure that the framing and your support for your hardy backer is all in place. And in this case, since we were doing a renovation, we had some piecemeal framing behind the wall and I really wanted to kind of beef that up a little bit with some plywood back there. There were some big spans and make sure everything was sound before we got the hardy backer on. Plumbing for the tub is pretty simple. I have included some shots of that so you can kind of see how those tub assemblies go together. The P-trap just lives right under the tub. And in this case, for this bathroom, because there's a concrete slab, we decided to elevate it on a platform and that allowed us to get our P-trap under there and get the plumbing to where it needed to be. So once we have our framing all sound, now it's time to do our vapor barrier. And the vapor barrier is pretty key because have you ever demoed an old bathroom and found just black mold like in the walls? <laughs> yes, like almost everyone. And the majority of those are because there's a vapor barrier problem. It wasn't done correctly. And so definitely do a vapor barrier. I use six mil black plastic. It's really durable. It'll last forever. So you can do that or some other type of vapor barrier, but definitely do a vapor barrier. Once we have the vapor barrier in, we can put up the hardy board and the hardy backer is going to hold the tile on the wall. So it doesn't have to be super pretty. It just has to be sound. <laughs> Yeah. So working with hardy backer is a little bit of an interesting material. It doesn't saw very well since it's actually like, it's a cement product. So you use a utility knife, you can score it and snap it. You can also use pliers to just kind of chunk it out where you need to around maybe, um, you know, your fixture plumbing or odd little shapes. You can just literally just grab the stuff and kind of contour it how you need. There are special fasteners for Hardy Backer and, and for wet locations, and so definitely get some of those. Uh, we use Backer On with a Torx head, inch and a quarter screws, they're great. They just kind of zip right in and hold that in place. So when I'm planning out my tile project and getting everything set up, one thing I like to do is to install some edge that I can tile up to. And so in this case, I put some trim up around the edge of the shower that I'm gonna be able to measure up to and cut my tile precisely to. This also gives a nice place to seat a bead of caulk or the grout line and makes it a nice edge to finish out on. So now that the hardy backer is up, this is a great time to plan out how you're gonna install the tile. We usually like to pick one point along the tub and you're going to want to make sure you know you can get a nice level line all the way around and you're not going to have to start with cuts. And on this first row of tile, you're really going to want to check your level a lot because this is going to you know influence how the entire install goes. So check your level almost with every sheet you put up on this first row and if you get that nice and level, everything else is going to go up a lot easier. So true. It's time to mix up the thin set and I prefer to use the stuff that's dry and mix it up myself. I think it's a lot cheaper and it uh, goes a long ways. One thing about mixing up the thin set and also the grout is to make sure you adhere to the water recommendations as much as possible. 
don't keep adding water back to your thin set and your grout. <laughs> it's because very tempting. It's so tempting, but don't do it. It is tempting, but the longevity of that install is not going to be there. You'll Your grout will crack over time, and it's just not going to be as durable as it would if you really just mix it and use it. One of the first things to do before you actually get tiling is to tape the seams on the hardy board. You just take some of your thin set and an alkali resistant fiber tape and put those on, spread a little bit of the thin set on the seam, and that's gonna give those spaces where two boards come together just a little extra support and it's gonna make the tile a little bit smoother in those areas. I'm gonna coat the hardy backer with the thin set using a quarter inch notch trowel. And we just want a nice even kind of layer of thin set on there. That's gonna help your tile just be nice and flat. So as much as possible, get the same amount of thin set everywhere on the hardy backer. And then place the tiles right up on there and firmly press them into place. And that's gonna suction them onto the wall a little bit. And at that point, you can make a little bit of fine adjustments if you need to for level. One key to a tile install is the saw. And we have an awesome saw for this one. It's a DeWalt 10 inch tile saw and the thing is awesome. It does plunge cuts, it does 45s. Um, it's a really great saw, I was really impressed with it. The, saw, the tile cuts came out really clean. There was very, very little chipping and it was so easy to use. Very smooth action on the cutting tray. Get one of these saws <laughs> if you're doing any kind of large tile job. This thing is worth it. It, it is an awesome saw. So once we had all the tile installed, we let it sit overnight to really make sure that that thin set can cure. We came back the second day to start on grout. In general, we usually go for a little bit darker grout color and that's just because it, you know, hides any kind of mildew or anything like that. And especially since this is a rental, going dark grout is just a really smart choice. For applying the grout, I just used a standard rubber gum float and that is a flexible, um, squeegee-like trowel that uh, kind of helps you to squish the grout into the spaces between the tile. When you're applying the grout with the float, you kind of got to squeeze and use your core, engage your core. <laughs> to, gotta get it in to there. To kind of force yeah. the grout into all those nooks and crannies around the tile. So once you get your grout on there, your tiles are gonna look so dirty. There's just gonna be, you know, you're gonna squeegee it off, but there's gonna be a lot of grout kind of covering all the tiles, and that's just fine. You just wanna wait about 15 minutes, and then you're gonna come back with a wet sponge and you're gonna wash them off. There's still gonna be a film on there, but that's fine. You don't wanna be washing the grout out between the tiles, you just wanna wash it off of on top of the tiles. And this is a great time too, if you see any holes between the tile, if you missed any grout spots, you know, fill them in. You can just use your finger, just push that grout in there and make sure it's there. Once that grout is all dry, you're still gonna notice a little bit of a haze on the tile and that's okay. You're gonna come back with a dry sponge or a dry towel and you're just gonna wipe that off. A couple keys with grouting is to really get that grout up there quickly. You know, the grout's gonna kinda slowly harden in the tub and you just wanna get it up there on the tiles. So make sure that you don't have anything else to do, you're just grouting and, and do small sections. Yeah, if you wait too long before you oh. do your wash, you yeah. are in for a world of hurt. After the final dehazing, your tiles are all clean now. You wait a day and you get to come back and do a seal. So it's always important to seal the grout and we use this great product that you can pick up at Lowe's called Miracle tile, stone, and grout sealer. The final look in your shower is gonna be right around the corner when you put your fixtures in place. For the fixtures, we wanted something that was gonna match the kitchen faucet and kind of the matte black look that we had going throughout the house. And so we got the Delta Trinsic set. Uh, super easy to install. <laughs> it was really easy. Um, I loved how it went in. It's really solid, it feels good. I think this is gonna last for 
a really long time. And it looks awesome. I really love the sleek look. It's a nice matte black finish. Um, it's not gonna show fingerprints. It's just a really pretty, really great set. And we're done. That is how to do a tiled shower surround with the grit and polish. We hope you enjoyed this video. Visit Lowe's.com for all of your home improvement needs. We've linked to all of the tools, the materials, the products, the everything. products it's down below. Linked in the description so you can pick all those up. While you're down there, hit subscribe. We have uh, hopefully many more videos coming out. <laughs> Also visit thegritandpolish.com. There's a full write-up on there, a blog post detailing in story form and picture form uh, a little bit more about the project. We'll be back with more DIY, more how-to. More renovations. More renovations. Stay tuned.